Alright, so welcome back to Catfish Not Feelings, everyone. I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I do. In this video, we're trying a different place. And it was honestly one of the most easy and nice dives I've ever had in a while. Like, the waves are super calm. And it was generally pretty shallow. The deepest we dove was probably about 8 feet. But overall, even though it was kind of shallow, we caught a lot of fishes. So in this dive, we saw a lot of pretty big opal eyes, like pretty decent, like football size opal eyes. Uh, we, we couldn't get a lot of footage of them, but every time we got a little close to them, they would just swim off. And just hugging the bottom and like staying still, they wouldn't come to us either. But we saw a huge one and like multiple times, but every time we would come up to it, it would always swim away. Like we could not see up on it. Yeah, it's as if like these fishes know that we're hunting them and you know, that's probably how they got so big. They probably saw all their other homies get shot at and now they learn from experience and they know to avoid us. And that's how they've been growing so big. But you know, that just makes it even more challenging and more fun to catch. Alright, so in this clip, this is my personal best half moon. What I've noticed about these half moon is they'll swim up close to you really fast just to take a look at you and then they'll swim off away in like one or two seconds immediately. And so in that little time frame, you have that time to like shoot one. And this one was pretty decent size. It was about, it was almost 14 inches big. It was about one to two pounds heavy. But you no, know, definitely stick to the end if you want to watch me cook this thing. Half moon. Good shot too. Alright, so this is the second half moon I shot. It was a little smaller, but it's still pretty good size eating. Let's watch it in slow-mo. There we go. Honestly, all my shots today, or that day, were pretty good. All of them were like headshots perfect. But this one did swim around a little crazy. Another second half move. This one's a little smaller though. Yeah.
so these next few clips are for my friends gopro but i saw the school of like this particular fish like once or twice but i just couldn't shoot one they were just moving around back and forth so fast and they weren't really stopping and i kind of had trouble maneuvering my gun to like shoot one but my friend managed to land one he um his gun is def his gun is shorter so it's a little easier for him to move around but he did a pretty clean headshot to one so for this species i'm not really sure what it is i feel like it's some kind of perch and at first i thought it was like a barred surf perch but we weren't near the surf and you know i know barred surf perches are a little red but if anyone knows what kind of species this is, just you know, let me know in the comments below. That'd be greatly appreciated. So here are my friends. He's putting his stringer through the fish, right? And he actually pokes out a parasite. So it's this parasite's pretty harmless to like us. But what this parasite does is, I think this is the uh, tongue-eating parasite. So this little parasite, it's like a isopod or it's something, a pod. I'm not sure what kind of pod it is, but what it does is like it will sneak into like the fish's gills, crawl into the tongue where the mouth is and eat the tongue of the fish. And so every time the fish eats food, the parasite takes its food instead. And so essentially that fish is kind of starving itself. But you know, just a little fun fact right there. So here I pretty much just see a sand bass chilling on the rocks. And I noticed it had like a little white mark on it. And it looks like someone shot before. And it turns out my friend actually shot it, but he grazed it. And you know, the sand bass just got lucky because I kind of rushed my dive and I missed too. <laughs> but yeah, he gets to live another day, you know. But it was a pretty big, decent-sized sand bass, though.